Welcome to model 34 of point set topology part 1. Last time we introduced the notion of connectedness, motivating it from the notion of path connectedness and then relating it to intermediate value theorem, least upper bound property, etc. So we will continue now the study of connectedness. So here is a simple theorem which says that if you have a continuous function from one space to another space, it will take a path connected space, a connected space as well as a path connected space, whatever. To the corresponding, the image will be connected or path connected. So it is actually two different statements here. By taking a subset Z, which is say connected or path connected, and restricting the function to that and to the domain FZ on the co-domain FZ, we can as well assume that f itself is surjective and make the hypothesis that x itself is connected or path connected. So let us first look at when x is connected. I want to show that y is connected. Okay. So take a separation of y, y equal to a separate b, it pulls back to a separation of x via f. So all that you have to do is f inverse of a, f inverse of b, that will be separation of x. Pure set theoretic thing. Continuity of f is used only to see that these two sets here, f inverse of a and f inverse of b are closed. Disjointness, union is the whole of x, is all pure set theoretic. Okay, so that proves that image of a connected space is connected. Now, let us assume x is path connected and, and we want to show that y is path connected. So remember now I have assumed f is uh, surjective. So given any two points say here a and b, okay, sorry x and y or x1 and y and whatever, they are f of a and f of b for some points a and b inside x. Okay. But a and b inside x can be joined by a path omega or gamma. Gamma is a path in x joining a and b. Then f composite gamma will be a path joining f a and f b. That shows that y is path connected. So, we had defined long back that a property of topological spaces is said to be a topological property or a topological invariant if the following holds. Whenever P is true for a space, it must be true for all spaces Y which are homeomorphic to X which are homeomorphic to x. <clears throat> so that was the definition 1.59, I am just recalling it. Okay. So, because image of a connected set is connected, automatically under a homeomorphism, image of a connected set will be connected because homeomorphisms are, are on to. So, homeomorphism preserves connectivity. Similarly, it preserves path connectivity. So, these two are topological invariants. Okay. Because of this property, what happens is whenever you are studying some connected spaces and so on, you can actually assume 
the whole space is connected concentrate on a connected uh, part of it okay and then discuss the whole thing because once you have that continuous functions from there will be always inside another connected set after all we are all the time studying continuous functions so lot of uh, such discussions can be isolated just around a connected set so this leads us to the notion of what is called as connected components suppose z is a connected subset of x and x has a separation then either z is inside a or it is inside b so this is the property of a connected set otherwise what happens you look at the you know you have to just uh, take the restriction to z z contained inside x z intersection a z intersection b that is a separation of z only thing is you don't know whether each of these each of these subsets are non empty z intersection a will be non empty if z is you know not contained inside b and vice versa if not contained inside a then this will be non empty so if both of them happens it will be non empty and that will be a contradiction that z is connected so one of them must be empty which means z is contained inside the other either a or b okay therefore what happens is okay let us let us understand one more thing about this connectivity suppose you have x as a union of two subspaces which are both connected and the intersection is non empty then x itself is connected later on we will generalize this one okay so this is just a trick using the previous lemma suppose this union has separation okay i have assumed that x1 intersection x2 is non empty so take x to be a point in the intersection then x being a single point it must be either inside a or b so you can assume it is inside a by changing the notation if you want but then from the above lemma it follows that you see x1 contains little x right and that is connected x1 is connected okay so xi must be contained inside completely inside a it is contained inside a or b is the previous lemma but since already x is inside a is a common point with x x1 so it follows that x1 is inside a the same argument for x2 also so both xi are inside a that means b is empty so that's a contradiction which just means that there is no separation of x and hence x is connected so you can see that already this can be very easy to generalize this for any family x1 x2 x n not necessarily even finite okay here i have not used any any indexing set as just two here this can be just arbitrary indexing set it will be applying for all of that is just an observation you can make once you have understood for x1 and x2 so now we make a definition motivated by especially this lemma okay and then this uh, corollary is a theorem here okay let p be a statement about subsets of a given set x this is a general definition first of all just to tell you what is the meaning of this maximum we say a subset of x is maximal with respect to p first of all it must satisfy p that property whatever so a satisfies p that is necessary 
then amongst all those we satisfy you know this p say suppose b also another member we satisfy p okay then a cannot be properly contained inside b b must be you know a must be the biggest or a must be the maximal that is the meaning of it so if b also satisfies a must be equal to b a is in contained inside b and b is also satisfies this a must be equal to b this is just means that if i take slightly larger subset strictly larger subset then it will not satisfy p okay so this property p must be for subsets of a topological space x that is the whole idea because it's a topological property and we are good so whereas this definition is for all this is just a set theoretic definition there is no topology here now we are going to make it a topological property especially take p to be the property of being connected in other words look at all subsets of x collect all of them which are connected into a sub space so that will satisfy p right so p is a subset of the power set of x all elements are connected to begin with now you take a maximal element inside this collection okay that means anything every element here is connected first of all and anything slightly bigger than a will not be connected okay that is the meaning of maximal element okay so we can make that as our definition now let us see let x be a topological space then every point x belonging to x is contained in a maximal connected subset thus x is the disjoint union of its maximal connected subsets if i prove the first part then the second part is purely set theory because every point is in a maximal set the so union of maximal subsets will be the whole of that so we want to prove that each point is contained in a maximal connected subset to begin with singleton sets are connected right so they are the members of this set of all connected subsets of x all right i want to show that it is in a maximal set everything every x must be in a maximal set that's what i want to show okay so now use this property to become you know to make to grow this this set point single point into a maximal set that's what we want to show this property we keep using it again and again so here is the way how to do that define a relation i am saying here is a way there there is not just this is the only way there are many ways for example you can use john's lemma and so on i don't want to i want to do it very uh, elementary way define a relation r on x as follows x is related to y if and only if there exists a connected subset t inside x for which to which both x and y belong both x and y belong to t singleton sets are reflexive so i don't have to take anything i can take t as singleton x then x is related to x if x is related to y x y are both inside t so y is also related to x transitivity is previous is is precisely what is needed and that is previous theorem if t1 is containing x and y and t2 is containing y and z then what happens t1 union t2 will be connected because they both of them have common point y t1 and t2 are connected they have common point so union is connected is a previous theorem 
So I have found a connected set which contains X and Z. Okay, so transitivity follows from the previous theorem. Therefore, this R is an equivalence relation. As soon as you have equivalence relation, you have a partition. Then this is the second part was precisely a partition. What is partition here? X is the disjoint union of maximal connected subsets. So each member of the partition is a maximal connected subset. So that is the part directly I am proving here. Okay, that will give you that every point is inside a maximal connected subset. So these equivalence classes are, I have to show, connected and they cannot be bigger. If you put any, any more point, it will be disconnected. That is a maximality. Okay. To show that it's connected, take, a, take an equivalence class. Okay. Suppose there is a partition. Pick up an element A in A and B in B. Okay. But they are in the same class, which means A is related to B, and hence there is a common connected such T which contain both A and B. Right? But T being connected, it should be either in A or in B. That's a contradiction because one point is inside A, another point is inside B. Okay. So T is first of all a connected subset and C is the equivalence class of all of them. So T, all the points of T are inside C first of all. Okay, because T is connected, all elements of T are in one single class and A and B are in C. Therefore, the whole T is inside C. Right? Okay, so but this partition for T intersection A, T intersection B will be a partition of T, that is not possible. Okay, so the different ways of arguing, I can just show that T, previous theorem already T has to be contained inside A and B, so that is not possible. Therefore, C is connected and there is no partition like this, there is no uh, separation like this. Okay, therefore, each equivalence class is connected, right? The equivalence classes are already partitioned, right? So, anything bigger than that cannot be connected. But if it is bigger than that, then it is not the class, it is the bigger class, right? So, these are actually maximal connected sets. So, it is better to give a name for this maximal connected sets after all. All the time, otherwise, you will have to keep on saying maximal connected, maximal connected. So, such things are called connected components. And quite often, when you are discussing connectivity, you will just say component. That is the whole idea of naming this. I mean, this definition is just for the namesake. Precisely, I mean, literally, it is for namesake. Okay. Let Z contained inside X be a connected subset. Then the closure is connected. Now, why we are having such a thing? You see, now we want to understand what happens to connected components. They are already giving you partition of the whole space. Now, this theorem says that take, take a connected component, closure is automatically larger, but it cannot be larger. It has to be equal because the closure is also connected component, connected subset. Being Z being connected component, anything bigger cannot be connected. Therefore, there must be equality. So this theorem tells you immediately that connected components are closed inside the original space X. Okay, so let us prove that Z bar is connected. Assume Z bar as a partition, A, B, okay, separation. But then Z is connected, so Z is inside A or inside B. 
remember if a is closed z is contained inside a then z bar is contained inside a this was our old uh, result about closures <laughs> therefore z bar is either inside a or inside b okay so there is no such uh, separation so you see several of these results we have been reducing by contradiction why because because the definition is definition of connectivity itself is in that form that's what i mean by it is some kind of a negative definition okay path connected components are also defined the same fashion what is it maximal path connected subsets of a given topological space okay so you can also say that just the, the equivalence relation is that if x is related to y if and only if there is a path from x to y no need to have that path connected component a path image of a path is already a path connected space so this is slightly uh, easier to uh, digest equivalence relation in fact usually whatever happens to path connected spaces you try to copy it in connected and if it works it works so that is the way that perhaps this theorem has been used here this definition has been done here okay so path connected components also give you partition of the whole space okay one has to be very careful when you keep uh, saying it is same thing same thing same thing it is lot of close relations but but they are after all different notions so somewhere they will be different so that is what you have to be careful about that x p a topological space and x belong to x b any point then the set of all points of x which can be joined to x in x is the unique path connected subset of x containing that point so this is another description of path connected components start at any point in a space look at all those points which can be joined to that okay so that has to be obviously that is path connected that has to be the component if there is another point that can be also joined so it's already there that's all very very easy to look at this way okay so there is no need to write down the formula the proofs of this one this is where i want to caution you that path connected component need not be closed in other words if z is path connected z bar may not be closed if that was the case then components would have been closed so we will see an example little later okay secondly if you have a homeomorphism from x to y then look at the path connected components of x okay they will go in one one fashion to path connected components of y exactly the components of x connected components of x they will go in one one fashion to connected components of y okay in general path connected components are connected also that we have seen right but number of connected components may be larger than the number of path connected components but this correspondence is true for both of them okay therefore what happens is suppose you want to analyze a homeomorphism with arbitrary x and y and something you can do that by component wise restrict f to one component here when you go to the image it will be another component there therefore right in the beginning 
you can assume that both x and y are connected by restricting the whole thing to a connected component okay so this is i i already told this one but i have repeated it now again all right so next time we will make it sure that you will be able to see a counter example also for this in any case we have a lot of work to do about connectivity all right simultaneously whenever such things are true for path connectivity we will keep uh, informing you or we will keep pointing out to you that's all okay so until next time so let us stop here